Are you trying to get a new keyboard, but completely overwhelmed by all the options? Well, this is the video for you. Believe me, I was in the same position as all of you, but now that I'm in the hobby, it's not so hard. Let's begin with some terms. The most important is the size of the keyboard. Forty percent and below are keyboards that have the absolute bare minimum. They have QWERTY, they have Shift, Escape, Tab, Windows, Enter key, a spacebar or two, and a backspace. That's it. You get these either for the looks, they are rather cute to be honest, or because you know what you want. If you came up to me and asked me what size of keyboard to get first, this would be the last size that I would suggest. These keyboards are also pretty hard to find a keycap set for because they have such a weird layout. Next is 60%. Now we're getting a little more usable. These keyboards have 62 keys and include many things on a keyboard that you need. All of them have the full QWERTY and numbers as well as all your modifier keys such as tab, shift, escape, control, and anything else. They all have a short right shift and some have weird layouts on the bottom row that don't have a normal 1.25U keys on the right side of the spacebar. This makes it a little hard to support this layout but many more keycap sets are able to support them now. Very few of these keyboards also have arrow keys and some MIDI keys, but in actuality, those are 65%. Oh, and they also don't have the function row on them, but most have layers where you can press the function key on your keyboard and use the numbers as function keys. So if you absolutely need your function keys and use them a lot, skip to 75% and above. 65% are very similar to 60%, but instead include around 67 keys usually. The differences between them are that these keyboards usually have an arrow key and media cluster on the right side of the keyboard. They also have a short right shift and usually have an unorthodox bottom row, like on my KVD67 Lite R2. I daily drive a 65% because it's quite small and I have plenty of mouse space and it has everything I need. By the way, most ergonomic keyboards are called Alice styles because their layout is based on the TGR Alice. They usually fall into this category with arrow keys and a media cluster, except they have a split spacebar. 75% are really trendy right now, along with 65% and for a good reason. These keyboards have everything a person could want in a relatively small package. These keyboards have the standard QWERTY except for a weird bottom row and usually a short right shift. There are a couple kinds of these keyboards. For size, there are Exploded and Compact versions. Exploded is what is featured in most boards, such as the GMMK Pro and the Keytron Q1. This means that there are borders between the separate clusters of the boards, like the main alphabet, the media keys, the arrow keys, and the function keys. This makes the board a lot more present to look at, and it feels less cramped. For a compact 75%, such as the Keytron K2, I think that you should only really get this if you're trying to squeeze the max amount of mouse room out of your setup that you can, and you can't settle for something smaller. Anyway, I use this layout lots, and I really enjoy it. TKLs are not just big in the custom market, but also in the keyboard market as a whole. You see this with Logitech and many other brands making TKLs as a part of their main line. This is for good reason. A TKL is a classic in both looks and layout, and it has everything you need and they look super good. Just imagine you took a regular old full size or 100% keyboard and chopped off the numpad. It leaves you with a nice keyboard that doesn't feel too cramped and one that offers more mouse space than your average keyboard. Plus, who even uses the numpad anyway? Just like the 75% and the full size, it has a function row and arrow keys. This size also usually has a normal bottom row as well. The media cluster is much bigger and more standard than the row of keys that you get with the 75%, and it's a pretty solid option for a beginner board. There is one problem, they are usually super expensive, with the case running you around $600. Finally, we have compact 100% and 100%. These are two slightly different keyboard layouts that I will lump into one category. A compact 100% is exactly what you think, it's 100% all smushed together much like a compact 75%. 100% is the bog standard keyboard that everyone at the office has. It has everything, the media keys, the function row, the arrow keys, and the numpad. 
Very few custom keyboards are 100% size, and most people use a separate numpad such as the KBD Fans Mark II if they really need one. Anyway, I hope this helps you with the sizes. This video was originally going to be a full video on how to buy a keyboard including plates and switches, but that would be like an hour long. I'll continue this series in the future, so stay tuned and thanks for watching.